Hey, you kittens! We are back with I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good simulator dating sim. And the Spark Monster is back! The Spark Monster is here to fight the hero! <laughs> oh, Van Van's all scared. Oh, yeah, uh, I think I left the fridge door open later, nerds. How dare you threaten! Me just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. He's so deep and mysterious and like alluring. Don't be afraid! Oh, don't be afraid. <laughs> be afraid! Be afraid! Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, you see? It kind of looks like a kitty cat. Don't hate me for seeing a cat in that. Is he rhyming on purpose, or is it just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence. Uh oh What will you do? Is it my turn first? Attack? You decide to go on attack. Which attack will you use? Uh-oh. Cook with love! Aww. Cook with love does one damage. Flop. <laughs> I'm never gonna win the Colonel's heart at this rate. It, it just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Oh god. You take one damage. Oh, okay. Defend? Let's try that. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you, boo. <laughs> Spork Monster forks their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love, which will only do one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utilitensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take more damage, you're not going to be able to survive the battle. We defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buff up. No one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and, quite frankly, a little gassy. You better attack soon or you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damages. A powerful blow. Spork monsters oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who will have to clean this up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Oh, he looks so worried! Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Yes! I'm here for this right now. I'm so here for this. Pot pie power pinch! Pop Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. Y you saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. We spare this wretched beast. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. Time sounds like you're gonna be back. The spark monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. Ooh. It appears to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. 
It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Wait, I thought this was a dating sim. What is this? What did I get myself into? You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to sign it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away as you pass out and Colonel catches you in his arms. I guess not. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. He did catch us. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Oh my god, he's so cute, and he's going to see that we love chicken. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love dreams are weird. Z oh my god, Z I love that. Can that come back? No, I guess not. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Yeah, but he still got ten other herbs and spices that he ain't telling you. It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Of course he does. I'm the most trustworthy person in the world. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You'll... You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Pop. Yeah? Miriam! Oh my god, I love this. He is not the guy I expected for you, but I love it. You guys are cute together. Like him? Like, like him? Like, 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 like him? I know it sounds like I'm moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like him, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only three? Sounds a little unbelievable, but okay, Miram. Not only that, but he found a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because he put a hat on one time and thought it looked cool. But, but Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with the Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Ahahaha, <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Do you like Colonel Sanders, Miriam? Do you want to date Colonel Sanders, Miriam? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. Oh, she just doesn't believe it. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your best... Your bestie's eyes light up. Hmm. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. 
The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me and the flavor was unlike anything I've ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both shared an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt it would be much use to anyone. Please, 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 please! It would mean the world to me! No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Make up a fake ingredient. I'm not screwing things up with Colonel Sanders. You'll see. Our love is real. You quickly think of a fake ingredient. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does the thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in, and cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. Cherry blossoms is like a theme for him. Oh. Oh my god, he's on a horse! He's on a horse! <laughs> I love this. It's Colonel Sanders arriving at school. So many thumbnail options. So many. Stand back and admire his majestic glory? Or run to him? Let's run to him. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion. You'll run away together. They'll show her good. Oh, Colonel! My Colonel! He looks mad. <laughs> However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. Ow! The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Whoa, 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 whoa. Zombie kitty, I am here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. Oh, it's this weird squeaky voice kid, right? It's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in the realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me, and all you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before he can continue, you suddenly awake. Ah, jeez. You find the Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices, or is that just his natural seasoned musk? We're gonna compliment. I don't think. I think it's still too soon to lean in for a kiss. I think kissing and all that is third day. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here, but one thing is for sure, Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. How he loves it! See? I told you, slow and steady wins the Colonel Sanders race. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? I don't know, I'm pretty sure you can summon a demon that can help you cooking and you win the race. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders. 
but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Ew. Act like we're not interested, but really try to get a closer. Right. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magical spell. Did they find the book? What happened to the book? However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem. It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? Make the rules? Ooh. I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes... Panas? Panash? Panaz? Panache? I don't know how to say that word. Pancake! It takes pancake! <laughs> We're just gonna go with that. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's the spell book from yesterday. It's a book just like the one you found after you encountered with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. Uh. I don't know what you're talking about, but that book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got popped pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! Hee hee hee! Before you dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Blurp blurp! Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bulls! Oh, you may Clank cry! Apologize to him! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Except for, like, kind of rolling over his foot, but still. Oh my god, look at him being angry! He's so adorable! Bzzz, He's so adorable. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No. Your mother was a stand mixer. Oh, he's so angry. Look at the steam. He's so cute, though. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shots Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sander! These crazed men are about to come to blows, and I think I must be over me. I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is just a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I, I got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students! Students! Please take your seats! I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tiny. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkle jumps on you and licks your face. What's... Down, boy. Down. Off the hoppin'. I think that's how you pronounce the last word. Does not look like English. The command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, sorry, I just got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. 
you want to pay attention to the lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. John Hancock. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss the most important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, zombie kitty? Naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what to choose. A glass of water? A shimmering, bleh, a shimmering pepper? Or a doggy biscuit? Well, doggy biscuit? Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles, an example of his own coloring talents. You reach out for it when... Ow! Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Uh-oh. Your apron is left in tatters, and the entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. Is this the end? Oh no. Oh no! I, I never even got to taste it. No, oh, no! You fade into the darkness, but something is there. The Spork Monster. Borka, what are you doing here? It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself, and you won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend, wherever you are. Which item do you want to sample? A simmering pepper? A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in the most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out and grab it and eat it right away. Oh, it's hot, isn't it? However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper is triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend! Whoa, 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 whoa. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Woo! You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is repeat my name three times. <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> I'm sorry, I still think I got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through <coughs> to fulfill <coughs> the prophecy. <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Ah, oh, man! You're never coming back, ghost of a student. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last kind of... That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared! Via time competitive cooked off! The level of theatrics with the twos is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time. Is everything a competition with you two? Yes! Yes! Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn to love to learn to love. Sure, why not? But, but definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to save my education and pursue my dreams of being a master hey. chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere for constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Zombie Kitty, you should have it. It will give you energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. It's so adorable. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down. And a tartlet for dessert. Look how adorably adorable adorable miriam i love you i love your tiny food can we just skip colonel sanders and date miriam it only takes about five seconds to eat miriam's tiny food but it's just what you needed for motivation 
You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing arena. Finally, a little sense, you breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Oh, gosh. Whoa, whoa. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about! Ah, Futurama, anyone? I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My best, you can best the best of them. Best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my chance to shine. I will defeat you, you myself. You had his chicken, and you made his mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again. Here, it's time to boil some water for potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Oh. That's wrong. What were you thinking, Zombie? Get your head in the game. You're going to need to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sunder's recipe exactly, but you have an idea. That's right. Oh, that's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. <sighs> Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going on, it's time for you to elevate your craft. What step of mine offers the most flavored? gratitude? That's right, you must never take the opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never to forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that, so where does it come from? That's right, this is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. A you try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. Uh-oh. Don't make me get the spray bottle! Next question. You notice Kyle Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, zombie kitty. Aw, he believes in me! He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you make a makes you totally forget what you are doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. Grrr. You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. You and Colonel Sanders are right now walk on the beach. What does that have to do with crafting this particular fried recipe and delicate baked biscuits? Woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. <gasps> to make up time, you toss her biscuit dough in the stand mixer, and as you do, the crowd gasps. <gasps> Yikes! Zip -zip. I know you love nothing more than seeing the fellow appliance utilized in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but zombie does. A good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You may shove your hand into the mixer to rescue dough before it's over mixed. Zombie kitty, no! Did I just... Is it on? But you're not fast enough. And your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quick spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. What is going on? Colonel Sanders shakes his head in jail. Oh my god, what is going on? You, What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my desk. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Uh... Oh, that's too bad, and I'm here with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two, on account of Zombie Kitty's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chomps as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Oh, that looks good. 
Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of a flavor that tastes good and tells the story of excellence. I was going to ask Zombie Kitty to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of the delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sander pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients within. Oh my god, that's so cute. Inside, you'll find a delicate cheese croquette on top of sliced honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelée. Colonel Sander seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm... Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lip, Ashley leans over and whispers something to hear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage you feel. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and shamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy, fried brow, you run to the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. I think he's just here for me. Game, stop projecting you and Ashley being together. He won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now, not just from devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, and motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. Wow, you're a little egotistic there. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been that way. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved that when I was going to amount to something, no amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember, every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure, it's honest, it's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will, cre I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. YAY! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepared the worst. It's the spark monster! Orko? It is I! It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back after the whole fight to the death thing. Maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... It's just I wanted to say I was wrong to attack you and I apologize. I don't know what it's like to always have to look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Haha, <laughs> you're so funny. Aw, oh, thanks, Porkle. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant monster in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spark monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell bus cast an dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. 
a magic spell book? Precisely. I procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you to respect it. You're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you would, should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat through sorcery and guild. If you need me, don't fear, I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Zombie kitty, together I'm sure we can defeat them. Oh my god, he just so loves me. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Chickens, chickens everywhere! It looks... It looks like you've lived such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, and never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I am always excited to talk food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side gist that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, or both perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation or keep it a secret just for you? Let's reveal it, because maybe he'll want to help me. You decide that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive head head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. Colonel Sanders, why don't we just start dating? I can make this coleslaw for you all day, every day. Come on. You could offer to make him more, but he, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be a perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look at, look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item and discover more about the colonel. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't realistic, it's real. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap, to, tap on an item to discover more about the Colonel Sanders. A lock of silver hair is woven through the thing. Upon the furnace bucket, you realize that the hair there is in silver in color. It's actually spun of silver. Um, a scented candle. You pick up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar, piece of wood floating in a lake, summer of 69. No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Tap on I'm to discover more about the colonel. Why did the door open? You take a large look at the urn sitting on the nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it and it's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Hey! It's the original adaptation of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. One of the frame photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. I don't see the fried chicken cheersing. Am I missing that? You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Does Colonel Sanders have Benjamin Button's disease? He, he's got, yeah. 
and an adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and the mustache combo he sports you figure this must be Colonel Sanders himself that or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle who frames a baby picture of just themselves probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded am I right this must be where he keeps the secret recipe you think for a moment what number is important to the Colonel Sanders, then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial, 11, 11, 11. The safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared to see me, Sal? Hmm. He's going to know we went in there. Oh, wow. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of a student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out in the world on the quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of the student is swept out with the breeze. And the door... You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and found a row of signature white suits hanging within. You take it off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you. It's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why he's wearing his Aww. jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it looks good on you. I think we got this in the bag, guys. Oh, criminy. The jacket. You forgot to take it off. You decide that now... Oh, no. But if we're cold, then why didn't we go to the fireplace? Uh, just tell him we were cold. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Ah! <gasps> but he didn't have hearts! Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow and you should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional break through gives you a pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, zombie kitty? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into slumber. Dream sequence. Z oh, yay! I love this. I love it. I want that to be, like, my background. You wake up to a beautiful morning in the Colonel Sanders hideaway. You spent the night? Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, it isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when the Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeous plate of breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. And we are going to leave it off here. The rest of the day will be in the last video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, kittens, and have a good night.